Good day. We've got COO Alex Holmes of Nano One Materials Corp joining us today. Nano One is a battery technology company focused on next generation cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. The company just announced a collaboration agreement with Sumitomo Metal Mining, as well as a $16.9 million strategic investment from the global mining giant. And Alex Holmes, Nano One COO, is here to tell us about this and its implications for Nano One. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. It's Monday, September the 25th. Please remember, this is neither recommendation or investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Alex, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, welcome and thanks for, for taking the time to bring us up to speed. Nano seems to be executing very well. You've had some very strong news recently. Firstly, almost two weeks ago, Nano announced production of LFP at commercial scale at your Quebec facility, and now this partnership and investment from Sumitomo. Can you please give us a quick overview on today's news release and what it means for Nano One? Yes, thank you for having me, uh, Martin. Um, today's news release is actually, um, is, we're very excited about it and, and, and very proud about it. And it's on the back of a number of months of work with a Sumitomo metal mining company. And why it's important is um, because really this is a, essentially a validation by a global leader in what we've been doing at Nano One with our one pot technology. And we see this leading into a number of areas of collaboration with Sumitomo Metal Mining, uh, specifically for LFP and NMC formulations of cathode X material with our technology. Uh, Sumitomo Metal Mining is a um, very well-respected uh, participant in the space and they're very integrated highly integrated miner, refiner, and cathode X materials producer today. Yeah, can you maybe dig into what Sumitomo does? Because um, they're quite a long, uh, they, they've got a quite a long sort of footprint along the whole uh, battery metals uh, supply chain. They're not just one part there. Uh, what do they do and, and what where in that supply chain would you be collaborating with them? Well, they have a very rich history dating back to the 1500s when they first started mining. Um, a copper mine actually in, in Japan. Um, today they mine copper and nickel and, and other uh, metals and then refine them into, um, in some cases, being suitable for as battery metals. And then they also produce a, uh, a cathode X material called NCA, uh, which is actually a material they supply to Panasonic. And those are the cells that Panasonic sells to Tesla. So um, they're also very integrated within the Japanese automotive ecosystem and the energy grid storage market. So, you know, Japan has a very uh, tight knit uh, ecosystem, uh, which Sumitomo is a very uh, significant participant in that ecosystem uh, with some pretty uh, significant growth plans. And if we look today, they're producing about 60,000 tons of cathode active material, and their ambition is to grow that uh, by threefold uh, out to 2030. Right now, the LFP market is uh, very focused or centralized within China, and all everyone not uh, not just the battery metals. Everyone's trying to diversify their supply chains, not trying to make it the most efficient, but the most robust, uh, given any kind of geopolitical or economic uh, events that happen. Uh, is this uh, partnership uh, more for a, a Canadian based? facility or for their Japanese ecosystem or potentially anywhere in the world? Well, I think ultimately it applies um, to many jurisdictions, global jurisdictions. Um, they do have a particular focus in the Japanese uh, market. They actually have an LFP cathode active material uh, facility today in Vietnam through one of their subsidiaries called Osaka Cement. They acquired that in 2022. And funnily enough, it is virtually the same plant that we have in Candiac, uh, Quebec, just outside of Montreal. And so because of our rich history in making cathode active material and their experience in LFP and the Japanese ecosystem, we found right out of the gate, there was a really strong set of, uh, you know, synergies and collaboration with each party bringing some deep expertise to the table. And they see they're you know really gearing up to be able to be a competitive LFP supplier, uh, certainly in Japan, but in, in other markets as well. You two weeks ago you announced uh, the commercial per scale production at your Candiac facility. Could you? It doesn't seem coincidental that 
that was announced, you sort of de-risked the technology, proven it, and now we've uh, you've got a, a new partnership and announced. Uh, can you talk about the significance from the the news from two weeks ago? Yes, I think um, you know if it, if it was lost on anyone, one of the things I really want to highlight from that news release um, or that update to our, our shareholders is that we produced LFP in full commercial scale equipment in repeatable batches, effectively. Um, at the same or better than what we made at our uh, innovation hub in Burnaby at our lab scale. So this is roughly 150 times scale up of the technology. And when if we think about, you know, what are some of the challenges and hurdles to technology scaling, it's often as that you make that step towards commercialization. Yeah. Well, we've just done that step. And yeah. it's because of the deep collaboration between Candiac and our Burnaby team, but also the deep experience that that team in uh, in Candiac has. They've been manufacturing LFP cathode X materials for 12 years. Some of them uh, at that particular facility, some of the people in that team have been involved for 18 years. And so this is um, very significant for us. And 10 months from acquiring the facility, we've retooled it. We've removed pieces of equipment we didn't need. And we're now making at full commercial scale uh, production units, LFP, repeatably. And this instills a great deal of confidence in the different uh, potential customers that we have. And so we're now in a stage where we're gearing up to, we've started to prioritize the customers, who's going to get what, what do they need the samples and what scales, and we'll start to be shipping those in Q4. And then with Sumitomo, I believe in the news release, it mentioned uh, a licensing type arrangement so that it would be, Sumitomo could have potentially then or the idea would be license the technology and they would implement it in their own facilities in Japan or maybe the, their Vietnamese facilities or, or some other facilities. Is that roughly, or is it fair to say that it is roughly what the, the vision is? Yeah, the vision, um, as I mentioned earlier, they're looking to grow um, roughly about threefold uh, out to 2030 in their cathode active materials production. Um, so the, the collaboration is about licensing or joint venturing of our technology. What is uh, what attracted Sumitomo to work with us is we have a differentiated technology that is um, is you know no waste streams, much less water use. It's more energy efficient, and really it's a more streamlined manufacturing process for making cathode active materials. And their view of the world is that in order for us to reach terawatts. Uh, of, of installed battery capacity in various different places, we need to um, think about the challenges of today's processes and bring in new innovations and new technologies like our one pot technology to, um, to, to really ensure that we set up a clean, resilient and differentiated supply chain. And your technology can get implemented in essentially their current supply chain. You don't need to wait for a next generation battery while it could be used in next generation potentially, it, 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 this process can be one of those steps just improving the efficiency and the productivity of uh, their current LFP uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, capacities. Um, it, it's potentially, um, uh, you know, you know, a renovation, if you will, to their existing facility. It's more likely to meet the kinds of volumes um, that the industry needs to be more of uh, to be a new plant uh, more than anything. But anytime cathode active materials are produced, uh, it's very much a, it doesn't matter where, who made it and where, how, what technology was used to make it. It's still a very collaborative back and forth process with the cell manufacturer to uh, get feedback on performance and, you know, the material properties. And, and then once you get qualified, then it's about producing and meeting their, Kind of demand profile. This was a, a great news from Sumitomo. I didn't read anything there that it was um, an exclusivity or anything like that. So this could be sort of a bit of a template for further partnerships with other um, cathode uh, companies uh, throughout the world. There, there are other news releases like this with other partners has the potential of uh, coming across our news screens? Yeah, so you're correct. It's not an exclusive um, relationship. Um, of course, uh, you know, Sumitomo's presence in the Japanese ecosystem is uh, really important to us because that in many ways opens 
doors for three-way collaborations and other activities within the Japanese ecosystem. Um, but our business model has always been licensing and joint venture of our technology. So we're remaining nimble and flexible to that. What we're doing in Quebec is really uh, focused on an LFP production plant first, quickly followed by that licensing joint venture model. And that is something that appeals to both the cathode producers, but also to the automotive companies who really want the supply chain ultimately to work for them and to be able to do that. Um, it's much easier if they have uh, you know, technology that can be implemented in, in various different supply bases. Alex, uh, I think we've hit the high notes of uh, the implications from that news release. Is there anything else you want to highlight before we wrap this up? Um, no, I think we've we've probably hit most of the important parts, um, Martin. I, I think, uh, you know, maybe just in wrapping up from our side, um, you know, we're really focused on executing on our plans. We put out a roadmap earlier this year. Um, to stakeholders to say this is what or this is what our plan is this is what we're looking to do we've been hitting our milestones we've been executing um, and uh, and so you know we'll continue to focus on that we'll continue to you know open up new partnerships create new opportunities um, and you know we're very happy and uh, and pleased to be able to announce today's uh, collaboration with Sumitomo um, as I said they are uh, one of the world leaders and very well respected. And this happens to also come on the back of Ca uh, the Canadian government and the Japanese government announcing um, memorandums of cooperation, both in battery supply chains and on science and innovation. Um, so this is, uh, this is great. Excellent. Well, congratulations on some fantastic news. Uh, that's great. Thank you for taking the time uh, to talk with us and give us, uh, explain the, the details and the nuance of this. And have a great day. And we look forward to having you back as uh, more uh, significant news comes out. Thank you, Martin.